Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss radiative forcings, but in order to do that properly we need to go back to the year 1988 and talk about the United Nations and the panel they created. So this panel is called the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Now you probably will hear it more commonly referred to as the IPCC. So essentially what this group is, is they are from all over the globe, a bunch of extremely educated scientists that come together and they discuss all the data on climate change. And so essentially what they've done is they've published five different reports that express all of the data with a beautiful analysis, but they also have just short bullet points at the very end of it to say, look guys, here's really what the big picture is, here are the four things you need to know. So for our course, we're going to discuss the fifth report, so that's the one that came out in this past year and it has four main bullet points that yes I expect you to know. The first one is that the warming of our atmosphere and our oceans is unequivocal. So what I'm saying by that is that this is definitely happening. There's no way to deny that our atmospheres and our oceans are getting warm. Like it's, it's definitely happening. You can't deny it anymore. The second thing is that there is a clear human influence on our climate. So we can no longer say, oh, maybe it's just natural causes. Cl uh, carbon dioxide is definitely in these cycles. It's going up and down. It's just natural. No, we can't say that anymore. It's definitely that there is a human influence. Number three. So in order to talk about number three, I need to give you a brief information, but we're going to have a whole video on this later. But essentially, they have these things called confidence levels. And the confidence levels let us know how confident they are in this information. And so in this last report, they've actually upgraded their confidence level, so they're even more confident. And so the actual rating is called extremely likely. And again, we're going to talk about this in a whole other video, so don't worry about it yet. But it's extremely likely that humans are the main cause of warming since the year 1950. So now they're even more confident that since the year 1950, the humans are the main influence on our warming. So that's even worse than we thought it was. All right, and then the last thing, number four, is that the longer we wait, to reduce emissions, the more expensive it will be. And here's why they included that last one. A lot of companies' arguments are this is crippling. If we have to reduce our amount of uh, carbon dioxide or whatever pollutant we're talking about, the, the number of emissions, it's going to cripple our business. It's going to cut us down. There's no way we can do this. And there's the IPCC is saying, look, guys, it doesn't matter. The longer we wait, it's going to be more and more expensive. We can't just stop right now and just, I, we, we just can't do it. We have, we have to figure out a way to reduce emissions, and you can no longer use money or budget as an excuse. So now there are uh, two different things we absolutely need to talk about when we're talking about radiative forcing. So radiative forcings are essentially just factors that influence incoming and outgoing radiation on earth. And so we have two different ways of describing this. We can either have a positive forcing or a negative forcing. So let's talk about positive first. Positive forcing would mean that we're having a warming effect. So our planet's getting warmer because of this radiation. And so we represent that with red. So warm, red, hot, red, that's kind of what we need to be thinking of. That's positive. The opposite of this would be a negative forcing. And a negative forcing has a cooling effect on our planet. And so cooling, burr, we represent that as blue. So without going into it and telling you too much more information, I want you to think, in the year 2015, so right now, do you think or would you predict more positive 
or negative forcings. Go. All right, did you get an answer? Hopefully you did. And so the way you would answer this question is you would look at the year 2015 and say, we are definitely experiencing an overall warming. We definitely have an increase in our average global temperature. So in order for that to be true, we definitely have to have more positive forcings than negative forcings. So let's look at a graph that shows all of our major forcings and a comparison of one to another. So let's look at this first top section. So all the way up here, all of these are considered human influences, where the one, very only one at the bottom would be our natural source or our natural forcings. And so remember, our red, which is on our right side, are our warming forces, where our blue, which is on the left side, are our cooling forces. And so red is positive, blue is negative. So let's start off by looking at the top ones, or our major ones. These are our greenhouse gases right there. So it's our carbon dioxide, it's our methane, it's our nitrous oxide, and it's our CFCs. And so I just want to point out that the CFCs, which is right here, are actually really small. It would be much, much larger if we did not have that Montreal Protocol. So thank goodness for the Montreal Protocol. All right, all of those are warming, okay? They definitely are positive forcings. Now, the next one we can look at is ozone. And ozone is really interesting because it has two different factors. So we know when ozone is in the troposphere, it definitely acts as a greenhouse gas because it absorbs IR radiation. But what's really neat is when it's in the stratosphere, it acts as a little bit of a protector for our planet because those ozone molecules absorb that incoming UV radiation, so it actually has an overall cooling effect. So ozone has both negative and positive forcings, which is kind of interesting. So now let's look at the next one, which we haven't really discussed before, which is our sur surface albedo. So an albedo, especially at our surface here, is a simply a relative ratio of our incoming uh, radiation versus our reflected radiation. So essentially it's just our reflected radiation all over our incident radiation. So I think it's actually easier to describe this with a picture. So if here's your ground, here's Earth, here's your incoming radiation, so here's your electromagnetic radiation coming in, we want to know how much of that radiation is reflected away and not absorbed down here in the ground, okay? So that's all we're trying to figure out. So just to give you kind of a ratio or a way to um, put this in your head or be a benchmark for your head, something like fresh snow is going to reflect a lot of incoming radiation. So this is going to have a high reflection, which means it's also going to have a high albedo. So this has values of around 0.8 and 0.9. So then something with a little bit less than that, or a smaller albedo, is going to be something like old snow. So mushy snow, it's not as white, it's not going to be able to reflect as much of that radiation. Then we'd have something like trees. So trees are going to have a much lower albedo because it actually wants to absorb that radiation. It needs that energy in order to perform photosynthesis. And then the last one, the slowest one, or the one that actually just absorbs the most of that radiation is our ocean. Okay, so that's a way to look at our different albedos. So now, just using that information, my question would be, when our albedo decreases, does that mean we have more positive or negative forcings? What do you think? All right, did we get an answer? Hopefully we did, but if you didn't, let me show you how I would have approached this problem. So we are saying that albedo decreases. So if albedo decreases, that means we have a decrease in the energy that is reflected, which means we must have an increase in the energy that's absorbed. And if we're um, actually increasing the amount of energy that's absorbed, we absolutely have to have an increase in warming. So if we have an increase of warming, we definitely have more positive forcings. So hopefully that makes sense. So just go through this very, very slowly. You eventually have to just see, do we have a net warming or a net cooling effect? And that can help you decide whether or not you have positive or negative forcings. All right, so now let's talk about this in terms of our albedo, specifically with rainforest 
forest versus crops. So here's the thing. We are clearing out tons and tons and tons of rainforest and we're putting down new crops or we're planting more crops. The interesting thing, and I hate using that word, is the plants that we're actually, or the crops that we're planting actually reflect more energy than the original rainforest did. So even though we're clearing out the rainforest, which is a bad thing, this process actually has a net cooling effect. And so we actually have more negative forcings overall, which is good for global warming. All right, so now let's move on and talk about another category. Our next category is going to be aerosols. So I find these to talk about easier in, in terms of an example. So let me kind of draw out a picture here. There's my aerosol. Here's the little spray thing. And now we're shooting out all this stuff all over here. So here's all the particulate matter that's jumping out when we use aerosols. So we have our sun over here, and it's putting down incident radiation. All right, so here's two things we need to know every time we talk about aerosols. The first thing, the particulate matter that they shoot out actually scatters incident radiation from the sun. And the second thing is that luckily it absorbs this incident radiation. So it scatters it and absorbs it. And so when we put those two together, if this was a simple math problem, we could just add the two up. What that actually means is that we have a net cooling effect. So if we have a net cooling effect, what do you think that means? Do we have positive or negative? forcings. What do you think? All right, did we get an answer? Hopefully we did. And if we have an overall net cooling effect, that means we definitely have negative forcings. All right, so we're going to end this segment with just the last source, and it's actually our only natural source. And so for this one, we basically talk about our solar brightness. So how bright is the sun? And so we've talked about this a million times before, so we're just going to punch through this really fast. There are four factors that come into play whenever we talk about our solar brightness. The first one is where are you actually on Earth? Are you near the equator or are you near higher latitudes? The second one is where is the Earth's distance or where is the Earth relative to the sun, to the Earth's distance from the sun? The third one is our Earth's axis, or the tilt. The last one, which is the one we always talk about or end at, is the sunspots. So we know every 11 to 12 years, the sun is giving us a different amount of energy just based on sunspots. But essentially, when we put all of these together, we definitely have a net warming effect which would mean that we have positive forcings. The problem is this is our smallest positive forcing. So the only one that is natural is our smallest one, which is so, so, so sad. Humans are really screwing up our planet. And I know it's really nice to have air conditioning and heat, but we need to find a better way of doing it. Take care of yourselves. Drink water. Have a great week.